Hello, everybody. Uh, nice to talk with you again. Uh, this week, I wanted to share with you the story of Yogya Valkya and Maitreyi from the Brihad Aranyaka Upanishad. Uh, this is a story um, uh, which is, offers us some insights in how to look at love and to look at our duties in the world, our place in the world, and uh, think of them in a broader context that allows us to uh, approach this higher reality, Atman, um, Brahman, uh, spoken of in the Upanishads. So the story goes like this. Uh, Yagi Valkya is a sage uh, and a teacher, and he's married to his wife, uh, Maitreyi, and he's reached that stage in life uh, when it is appropriate for him to go off um, into solitude in the forest uh, to meditate and to deepen his uh, practice of spiritual wisdom. And so he asks Maitreyi if, if uh, he can make uh, an agreement so that she is well cared for while he's gone. And she asks him, he said, well, well would all the wealth in the world uh, give me immortality? And he says, no, you'd be rich, but you wouldn't be immortal. And she says, well, I don't have any need for that. So why don't you teach me what you know? And so he does. And he says to her, not for the husband is the husband dear, but for the sake of the higher self, the Atman, is the husband dear. Not for a wife is a wife dear, but for the sake of the higher self, this Atman, that, the bo that both the husband and the wife share, is the wife dear. Not for sons are sons dear, but for the sake of this inner higher self, is the husband, is the son dear. Not for wealth is wealth dear, but for the sake of the Atman is wealth dear, nor status, nor the worlds, nor even the gods. The gods are not uh, dear because of themselves, but because they lead us to this higher Atman. All beings in the world, in fact, all this world, is dear to us because it helps us approach this higher Atman. It helps us to see it in ourselves and in others. It is that self, that Atman, which is to be seen and meditated upon. All becomes known when one understands that singular essence of all things. Going further, the Brahman, the son, the human being will tend to neglect somebody who does not see them, that Atman reflected in you. So one who doesn't see Atman in others tends to be neglected. The gods will neglect one who doesn't know the gods as Atman. All beings will tend to neglect one who does not see the beings as having that dignity of Atman. Everything will see will neglect one who does not see Atman in it to some degree. But there is a way in. When you hear the sound of a drum, you cannot grasp the sound of a drum. But you can grasp the drummer or you can grasp the drum itself. And in that way, you can begin to grasp the sound of the drum. When you hear a conch being blown, you cannot grab the sound of the conch, but you can grab the conch itself, or you can grab the blower of the conch, and in that way you can begin to grab uh, the sound of the conch. So it goes with a lute and everything else. Everything that exists in this world is like a lighted fire laid with damp fuel on the top of it. There are various clouds of smoke issuing forth, there is the Rig Veda, the Yajur Veda, all the knowledge that we have in the world, all the history, sciences, the Upanishads themselves are mentioned here. All the explanations, all the sutras, everything arises like smoke out of this fire of Atman, fire of Brahman. Everything has been breathed forth, as it were, out of this one source. And so in a way, all these point back to this one self, back to this one Atman, just as all waters flow towards the ocean, all sense objects flow to their senses. And so we see that there is a unity behind all this diversity, all these things leading us back to Atman. So what is this Atman like? There's this example given of a lump of salt. So you have a lump of salt and you dissolve it into water. It pervades everything, but it's not present. It's not visible there. But here you can taste it, there you can taste it, take it from this part of the water, that part of the water. And in the same way, this great being is described as infinite, limitless, infin 
consisting of knowledge, consisting of consciousness. Beings arise out of it, and they dissolve back into it. And when they dissolve, just like the, the salt, the knowledge that they consist of doesn't exist in a way. And so Maitri sort of was taking all this in up to this point. But then she says, well, that's, that's confusing. What do you mean that there's no knowledge if, if the nature of Atman itself is knowledge? And what he says is this. He says, where there is duality, there one smells another, one sees another, one hears another, one understands somebody else, right? When everything has become the self, then by what and whom should one smell? By what and whom should one see? By what and whom should one hear or, or speak? By what and whom should one think? By what and whom should one understand? So we're talking about something beyond the subject-object relationship. By what should one know that by which all this is known? By what, my dear, he says, should one know the knower of all? And so here we are left with a big question, obviously, right? And there's a slight answer here in terms of what this looks like, what it might look like for someone in that state. So there's this very poetic section that comes right after it, which I'll read. It says, the earth is honey for all beings, and all beings are honey for this earth. The shining immortal being who is in the earth is the shining immortal being in this body. He indeed is just this Atman. This is immortal. This is Brahman. This is all. This water is honey for all beings, and all beings are honey for this water. This shining immortal being who is in water is the shining immortal being in the seed of life. He indeed is just the self. This is immortal. This is Brahman. This is all. This air is honey for all beings, and all beings are honey for this air. This shining immortal being who is in air is the shining immortal being in our breath. He indeed is just this self, this Atman. This is immortal. This is Brahman. This is all. This sun is honey for all beings, and all beings are honey for this sun. This shining immortal being who is in the sun is the shining immortal person in the eye. He indeed is just this self. This is immortal. This is Brahman. This is all. This, these directions are honey for all beings, and all beings are honey for all four directions. This shining immortal being who is in the directions is the shining immortal person in the ear. He indeed is just this self. This is immortal. This is Brahman. This is all. This lightning is honey for all beings, and all beings are honey for this lightning. This shining immortal being who is in lightning is the shining immortal being in light itself. He indeed is just this self. This is immortal. This is Brahman. This is all. And it goes on. This space is honey for all beings, and all beings are honey for this space. This shining immortal being who is in space is the shining immortal being in the space of the heart. He indeed is just this self. This is immortal. This is Brahman. This is all. This truth is honey for all beings, and all beings are honey for this truth. This shining immortal being, which is in truth, is the shining immortal being in the truth that we feel in ourselves. He indeed is just this self. This is immortal. This is Brahman. This is all. This humanity is honey for all beings. And all beings are honey for this humanity. The shining immortal being, which is in all humanity, is the shining immortal being, which is in the individual soul. He indeed is just this Atman. This is immortal. This is Brahman. This is all. This self is the Lord of all beings, the King of all beings. And as all the spokes are held together in the hub and rim of a wheel, just so in this self, all beings, all gods, all worlds, all breathing creatures, all these little selves are held together. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, and we'll see you again uh, next Saturday.